Why hello there, my name is Mountain, and today I'd like to talk to you about this. And what is this, you might ask? Well, this, my friends, is the X Air Duffel 27 liter by Waterfield Designs. Waterfield Designs is a small San Francisco-based company that manufactures made-in-the-USA bags and accessories mainly for travel and also for tech carry and organization purposes. As the name X Air Duffel might hint at, this is a duffel made specifically for travel and air travel and more, more specifically, uh, specifically designed, and I said specifically three times there, to fit under most airline seats and falls within the personal item size limitations of most carriers, whether domestic or international. It belongs to Waterfield Design's X Air series, which is characterized by not only being designed for air travel, but also the use of modern X-Pac fabrics, and also being relatively lightweight and with accommodations for modern tech devices. Now, its main claim to fame is that, in my opinion, it is a simple but very well executed take on the carry-on travel duffel space or personal item space, and it has a very efficient space maximizing kind of design, as you can see, a very good capacity to size ratio, and it still provides decent organization and has thoughtful design touches that makes it well, well suited for kind of intended use case of carry-on air travel. Now, a couple of areas of potential improvement in this bag include the fact that in my experience, these front pockets are pretty overbuilt and somewhat less useful and more frictionful than they should be. And there's also um, some inside front lid pockets that has an un unfortunate tendency of letting your stuff fly out all over if you're not careful when you open them. Now, there's also a general limitation, I think, of this form factor that's not the fault of Waterfield or this bag specifically, but just, you know, as a kind of duffel style bag, whether you're carrying it by shoulder or by these straps, there's going to be a limitation on what you can comfortably carry in terms of weight. Now, the smaller size of this helps restrain some of what you can pack in here, but it's just definitely something you need to keep, keep in mind when looking at this form factor of a bag. Now, the basic facts of this bag is that it retails for 459 US dollars on the manufacturer website, sfbags.com. Now, it comes in a variety of colors, including black, blue, slate, and olive in two different material ways. This is the VX, or VX21 or X-Pac and also the more traditional brown wax canvas that Waterfield Designs tends to use in a lot of their bags. Now, eagle-eyed viewers being both intuitive and plentiful on this uh, channel, uh, probably have noticed as a group that this is the VX21 X-Pac version in black. Probably no surprise if you've been watching this channel for any amount of time. Um, it's only available in a single size 27 liters, which this one is. And I bought this with my own money and I've been using it for a few months and have taken quite a few trips, uh, both domestic and international air travel and also some domestic uh, car travel and rail travel with this bag. Now, let's talk about who this bag is for and who it's not for. In terms of who this is for after using this for a few months, my thoughts are that this bag is pretty well, tra uh, well suited for the two bag travelers uh, or the two bag travel use case. Specifically, this form factor, uh, high capacity to size ratio and well thought out travel designs means that this pairs really well with the first primary bag, whether that's a roller luggage, this one has a roller pass through, or a backpack that you, know, you can carry it by hand or you can shoulder carry it, which works well with a backpack. And it also fits under an airline chair and it fits within those personal item limitations on most planes, which makes it perfect uh, to use as a second bag there. Um, weekenders is another great use case if you're looking for a solid weekender and whether you're traveling by car or train or plane, this is the perfect size, fits easily in a bunch of places under in a trunk, uh, in a passenger footwell, overhead rack, whatever. Uh, and it looks, you know, it stacks or sits really well. You can put things on top of it as well. I mean, within limits, it's a soft bag, but um, you know, useful in the trunk um, and it looks you know pretty decent and professional the form factor allows for efficient packing which we'll talk about in a second but just as a quick preview you can see there's actually a lot of stuff in this very simple form factor here and the hand carry won't cramp your merino wool sweater draped ever so gracefully over your shoulder when you saunter off your helicopter in the hamptons because i know a lot of people who somewhere in the hamptons must be watching this channel now the last use case that I think this mag might be well suited for is for the professional homies out there. Uh, as much as I love backpacks, and I, I realize sometimes in some business travel situations, that's not going to be the best thing. If you're wearing a suit, a backpack is pretty hard thing to carry. Um, it tends to kind of you know ruin the lines and wrinkle your suit, etc. 
for those of you that are seeking something kind of professional-ish, but still with a bit of attitude on a business trip, uh, this doesn't look out of place in a sea of toomies or carry on or carry off a plane and into the office, uh, but you know, still has a little bit of distinction and coolness. Now, there are a couple of use cases I don't think this is well optimized for. One of them is for those of you that are carrying the kitchen sink. I've actually got this bag fairly well pa uh, packed out with a little bit more stuff or at least weight than I would normally carry. Uh, for example, I have a 16 inch MacBook Pro in here as opposed to like a MacBook Air, which I would usually carry. And then I've got an extra kind of device inside here that I don't usually carry. Um, so, you know, if you're packing the kitchen sink, both the form factor and the size limitations are gonna be challenges that you run into pretty quickly. Um, true one bag travelers, I wouldn't make this my main travel bag unless you're packing the second uh, packable day pack in here. And, uh, you know, it is possible to do that. It's only 27 liters that will take up some, you know, pretty valuable space unless you go with a pretty unsupportive like sill nylon little sack, which I would not recommend as a packable bag. Uh, thus, in most cases, I don't think this is going to be the best bag for if you're only one bag traveling here. And then finally, uh, people who are looking for outdoor, like uh, outdoor use uh, day pack or like a gym bag, like there's no reason this can't work. I mean, the X pack is pretty robust and the construction is robust. It will hold up, but there are definitely better um, or more specialized duffels uh, for gym use uh, or for outdoor use that are going to be more rugged, even more rugged, I should say, uh, and are going to be more importantly significantly cheaper and still basically get you everything that you need for those particular use cases. And then I think there's a lot of um, functionality on this bag that will probably be wasted in those kind of use cases there. So next, let's talk about the exterior design and materials of this bag. Now, the first thing you notice is this really nice kind of square rectangular prism type shape, uh, along with the kind of like gentle kind of rounding and some of the, and you know, like a little bit of like, uh, contour just a little bit here and here that helps soften up like the really sharp uh, rectangular lines. Uh, later on in the also consider section I'll show you something uh, such as the um, Mission Workshop Transit Duffel that I think has a little bit more of a straighter edge type of construction versus this one. You also notice the great materials like I mentioned this is a VX21 X-Pack um, and then you also have nice touches like these um, you know coated water resistant zippers, some custom metal hardware here. Uh, it's going to be a little bit hard to see, but some custom metal hardware with their branding on side of here. Uh, you also have kind of interesting touches in like this, you know, leather um, um, parts that are used on the flap of the front pocket and on the bottom here and also on the handle. Um, you also have like things like these sliding fidlock buckles, etc. So kind of really nice, a mix of modern materials. And those of you that have been fans of Waterfield Designs for a while know that they started out, I think, with a lot of like waxed canvas brown kind of, you know, more natural, organic kind of whatever. Uh, so it's kind of nice to see these more modern materials in here and with the very nice form factor. Like there's nothing, you know, revolutionary about a rectangular type duffel bag, uh, but this one is a very nice take on it with nice modern materials. And like I said, I think the, the most of the execution on this bag is and design is pretty good here. Um, you also notice it stands upright. It will fit under a seat in front of you, even in most economy class seats. Uh, it fits really nicely in an overhead uh, compartment. You can lay it on side like this, though I wouldn't recommend it. It's actually taller, taller than it is wide. So if you do this, you actually increase the footprint. Um, it's designed to stand up um, or just, you know, be easy to pick up or sit down like, you know, on a on the floor next to you or checking in or whatnot. And all of the pocketing is kind of oriented towards the top. So it is really easy to be able to kind of get stuff in and out of it. For the most part, um, there are a couple of, you know, little fussy parts here. Uh, especially when it's jammed on the seat in front of you. But generally, like, that's something you're going to notice is, like, this is a, uh, a very well designed for that kind of uh, use case I mentioned, personal item carry-on on a flight or, like, as the second bag that you bring with you. Like, very easy to work in and out of this. There's also a lot, and I'll talk a little bit about this in the individual organization sections, but, like, the way that the access works. I don't want anything to spill out of here. I'll save that surprise for you in a second. Um, the way that the different compartments work... Uh, allows it to kind of flip open really easily for you to have like really maximum easy um, access and uh, packing and be able to find everything really easily in this bag here. Um, overall, I'm a pretty big fan of the aesthetics of this bag and I like the solid implementation of a simple and straightforward uh, design with a lot of functionality uh, in there. 
Obviously, beauty is in the eye of the holder. I don't think it's necessarily a beautiful bag, but I do think it's a very good looking bag that flies under the radar and still has some really nice distinct touches and is kind of subtly distinguished by its usage of the materials in particular. So next, let's talk about the load carriage on this bag here. It has two primary methods of load carriage, these attached um, handles, and then it also has a shoulder strap, which I'll pull out and show you how it attaches here in a minute. Now the carry handles are permanently attached to the bag, uh, one on either side. They're this very simple uh, four centimeter wide webbing. Uh, the total length from one attachment point to the other is a 70 centimeters long, but in practical terms when carried, the maximum distance from here to the top of the handle, the apex of the handle, is about 25 centimeters. Now what that means is you can comfortably hand carry this bag like this. Uh, and obviously going to depend a little bit on your height, but for me it you know, kind of hangs around mid-calf or so. Uh, well, your height and the length of your arms and legs, etc. Mid-calf or so, which is a really great, you know, for like, it's very easy to set it down. I don't have to like bend over a lot and it's really easy to pick it up, but it's still not dragging on the floor. But it also means that for most people, you're going to be able to shoulder this bag like this. And, uh, and I realize the camera angle is a little bit low here, but it's pretty easy to kind of just take the bag and shoulder it like, like so. And uh, it's fairly comfortable. Now, because these are not adjustable in any way and they're fixed to the bag, um, this means that obviously people who might fall on one extreme or the other, for example, very petite people or like my swole gym homies or whatever with your big massive arms, you might have trouble shouldering these or conversely, like it might hit on the ground or might you know, drag a little bit when you're carrying it, but for me, um, I think it's going to probably fit uh, a large range of people just kind of, you know, they did a pretty good job, I think, of, of looking at um, kind of the right length for these handles and going the one size fits most whilst it's um, getting rid of or foregoing any kind of like, you know, complicated, minute adjustments or what have you. Now, um, the actual handle portion of the bag is just this webbing so doubled over and they sewed this um, kind of black leather um, kind of covering over it. Um, and I like that in that there's no like, you know, additional Velcro wrapper cushion thing, magnets or anything like that. How do they work? Um, which you sometimes see in other bags. I actually like that. I think this is a very straightforward implementation that adds a significant, but you know, constrained amount of comfort rather than just like the doubled over webbing. Uh, it's not finicky, which is often what I found with like those wrappers or those Velcro things that are attached. They're, I hate those. And the magnets, in my opinion, in my experience, just don't work when you're carrying a bag like this under load. Again, I'll talk about the Mission Workshop uh, drift tote um, or duffel later, which suffers from that probably has snaps in there. They just always come unsnapped when you're carrying the bag under load. This leather also adds a little bit of natural friction. So when you grab the handles, like they kind of naturally kind of lay over one another like this and the f little bit of friction helps keep them together and in the hand, of course. Um, and it adds a little bit of softness over what you would get with normally just this webbing or the double over webbing biting into your hand. So for me, this is a pretty, I mean, it's a very straightforward and simple um, carry, but I like how it works in practice. And I, uh, and I thought it's uh, pretty effective despite the simple, you know, nature of the organization. Now, um, I did uh, find that um, this is comfortable within a limit. And when this bag gets too heavy, it's only 27 liters, but you can pack it out, you know, fairly heavily if you're not careful. Um, or, and or you're walking, you know, anything longer than like a moderate distance carrying this bag. Um, it does tend to get tiring. It's just inevitable. These are very thin you know, relatively thin in every dimension. And so there's, you know, just the practical limits of physics. But for like, for example, through an airport when it's like moderately loaded out, um, you know, with something reasonable um, and you, every person's definition of reasonable is gonna be a little bit different here. Um, you know, definitely I would say like under nine kilos, I, I would try and aim at nine, 10 kilos, I, I think for such thin handles. Um, at least if you're going to plan to hand carry it. Uh, anything, you know, moderately under that, like it's going to be fine, I think, for walking through an airport, walking from an airport to the taxi or to your car or whatever, especially because you could easily set it down when you're on an air tram or something like that. Um, uh, longer distances, like again, it's just going to become, unfortunately, in, uh, a little bit painful. Now, what I like about these handles is they're, besides everything I talked about here, they're attached on either side, so that means that the bag, when carried, kind of just lifts straight up like this. It doesn't usually, I find, just 
um, hit too much against my leg or my body when carrying it like this. And when shouldering the bag, uh, it does definitely cant out a little bit, but I found the width not to be so obtrusive that it was impossible or it was annoying to carry like this and your hand naturally kind of grabs like one of the front straps to help stabilize it. Uh, the uh, leather helps keep it on your shoulder there as well. Now, there's also a second mode of carry, which is the included what they call Supreme Suspension Strap, which is quite a doozy of a name, if you ask me. Uh, I've got it carried, tucked just out of here in the work compartment. Show you this first. Uh, the Supreme Suspension Strap is um, a symmetrical um, strap, uh, by which I mean both sides are identical. Um, that has two points of adjustment, these slider buckles, one on each part of the webbing. The webbing is the same webbing as you saw on the handles of the X duffel. They terminate in your standard, um, well, standard in terms of design anyway, like uh, gate clips with swivel gate clips. Uh, anybody who's carry like one of those laptop bags or many kind of messengers or whatever will be familiar, or duffels will be familiar with this. They have a little bit of like custom, you may not be able to see it on camera, but like Waterfield branding. Uh, I think a lot of, if not all of the hardware on here, uh, the metal hardware, excuse me, um, is probably made specifically for Waterfield or at least is branded by them. Uh, gate clips operate very smoothly. Um, there's no lock on them. I think that's fine. I don't think that's, I think that's a little overkill. These sliders slide <laughs> smoothly. And then in the middle, and they're completely identical in length, in the middle you have this kind of cushioned pad that has a little bit of, has a little bit of elasticity to it, but without going like way overkill. It's a very thin pad. And it's a kind of, I don't know what material this is. It's a little bit, it's a, definitely an artificial fabric. So some sort of nylon or whatever, covering what it feels like a foam or rubber, um, a dense foam or rubber core. And on one side, there's this non-slip um, coating. And on the other, it's, even though it is artificial, it has a slight bit of tack, it actually slides smoothly over the clothing on this side. Whereas on this side, it doesn't, it does a good job of just staying in place. And then it kind of is slightly broader than the, straps themselves, but tapers into these kind of leather um, terminators or transition pieces. Uh, I like this strap for its approach to the problem space. I think that the problem space of shoulder straps for duffels or, you know, these kind of, you know, bags, laptop bags or whatever, is one which people have very polarized opinions. Some people like a really thick padded, you know, Mondo air gel foam thing here because they want maximum cushionage. Some people like a really thin, broad, low profile strap that relies on the simplicity and the broadness of the surface to distribute the weight. Um, some people like the non-slip thing. Some people hate it. It tears up their clothes and they prefer like a smooth sliding one. Some people want like an asymmet asymmetrical strap or like the strap because if, especially if you're doing it like messenger style, you want like the strap a little bit closer to the shoulder as opposed to right in the middle across your chest. Uh, some people prefer, you know, like the, the shoulder carry. So they want the strap, the suspension part in the middle. Some people like it to slide. Anyway, there's all sorts of different opinions here. This one tries to like meet everyone in the middle. Like I said, it's cushiony without being like overly thick. It has a sticky side and it has like a smoother side. The symmetrical adjustment means you can carry it over a shoulder with the strap in the middle, or you can, you know, asymmetrically slide out one of these so it's shortened up so that it actually wears over the shoulder as opposed to over the chest so it becomes less symmetrical, I guess. Um, anyway, they tried to meet a lot of people in the middle with this strap, and generally I like it. It's very, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, simple, but still has a lot of functionality built in. It attaches to the bag with these uh, D-rings on either side. The D-rings are sewn in with this extra bar so they don't rotate here, which is to be expected at this price point, to be clear, but like, it's nice because, you know, I think we've all seen like those much cheaper, um, you know, mess or computer style laptop bags that they give out for free at like expos or conference or whatever, where like you know, the pad gets all twisted and then this D-ring rotates and then, oh, I, I hate that. Whenever I see somebody out playing with it, I just, I wanna bring them to the light. Okay, really straightforward clip. It stays in place. The swivel obviously lets it do the swivel thing. And then you're gonna have the same thing on the other side here. Uh, it's very fast to deploy. Um, one thing I worry about is like, I wonder if over time this black coating is going to flake away. You're going to get like the nasty kind of, well not nasty, but just like the natural metal silver showing through um, 
you know, from the wear marks or whatever, kind of makes the bags look prematurely aged. But so, so thus it is. The sliders hold their position um, even when they're not under load and they're very easy to adjust when not under load. So good job on that. A um, couple things here. So you can obviously sling the bag over a shoulder if you wanted like this. Now here you're going to notice that when it's not up here, you're not stabilized. It is you know, kind of really sticks out a bit, depending on how much you have loaded in here. The other thing you notice is that this D-ring is mounted towards the work compartment, the rear of the bag. So you actually get bag cant. Uh, you can see like the bag is sort of canting or wants to cant against the body. Um, this is, in my experience, really affected by like what you have loaded inside of here and the weight distribution, blah, blah, blah. I don't like this as much uh, when doing shoulder carry. I wish that the Thing we're a little bit more in the center. Uh, it, again, it's so dependent upon your particular load carriage and how that affects the balance of the bag, though, that it's hard to say it's necessarily a con. You can also, um, you know, pull this out all the way if you wanted. And then you can wear the bag, you know, uh, messenger style, where I think here, um, when you've got a crossbody bandolier, messenger style, or whatever, the fact that the attachment point is towards the back is actually a boon because then you have this whole broad surface that's stabilized against the back or the width of your body. And it, it generally, I think that's a, you know, a, a better um, way where that feels a little bit more comfortable depending on what you have loaded in the bag because of how these are attached a little bit to our side. You can definitely, you know, shoulder carry it. Here. Um, so anyway, uh, last thing is if you don't like this shoulder strap for whatever reason, um, you can swap it out for almost any shoulder strap that comes with these standard, that attaches with these standard D-rings and gate clips, or standard gate clips here. So I like that. When not in use, the D-rings kind of just hide away in this water bottle pocket. So that's a really nice touch. And this strap is, I mean, it's not ultra lightweight. You know, there's metal hardware and there's a pad and stuff on it. But I like that um, it's not bulky and it's not too heavy. So I often find myself just chucking it inside of here. The fact that it's really easy to clip on and off, like no muss, no fuss at all, I really like that, means I'm much more likely to use it. Bring it, because it's smaller and relatively compact, and also this work compartment carries a lot. And easy to attach and detach means I'm much more likely to use it when I need to. For example, oh, I gotta walk from one terminal all the way across you know, the tarmac to the other terminal, because I'm switching planes or whatever, rather than just kind of like sucking it up and just enduring like the pain of carrying this by hand um, as I would if it were more difficult to deploy. So I think that's this is a really nice example of how like reducing friction uh, it makes a big difference in what you are actually willing to do or not do with the bag. And for me, absolutely, I like this bag a lot more because it is easier to just deploy the strap, shoulder strap and carry it long distance and take it off when I'm ready to get on a plane or whatever. And that keeps me from like hating the bag when I have to carry it a long distance under a heavy load, right? The last thing I will mention about the load carriage is actually in the back there is this luggage pass-through, standard roller luggage pass-through. It doesn't have any kind of Velcro or button in the middle like you sometimes find to prevent porking uh, uh, on the rotational axis of the canes, which is sometimes a problem uh, with bags that just kind of have like this very simple broad pass-through. But this bag, square, broad flat bottom and uh, relatively wide and short or stout uh, construction means that it actually has pretty good purchase on the bottom on most roller luggages and the weight is kind of fairly equally distributed. It doesn't torque that much I found around the canes despite not having the middle attachment point here and it's obviously very fast to deploy or not deploy it is out of the way when you're not using it. Um, other thing you might notice is there's these two little like, you know, just sort of pass through channels, which comes as a result of how they just have this single strip of X-Pack and then they sewed two, two uh, seams here to kind of form the, the sort of form the main luggage pass through. In the product introduction page, they show you can like clip like sunglasses on here or something like when, the, when it's under the seat in front of you, sorry, it's under the seat in front of you, pretend I'm sitting here, you can like clip your sunglasses or something there. I, I didn't do that. Um, First of all, because I don't wear sunglasses inside of an airplane, that'd be weird. Um, but also, like, I, I just, that seemed like, <laughs> seemed weird. I mean, I feel it's a lot easier to store your sunglasses inside of it or whatever. Um, but, you know, I think of it as sort of like the same as like the Evergoods, you know, handles, how they have a little kind of like two uh, extra little loops there because of how they sew in the handles. It's a nice little thing that maybe somebody out there might find something to use it for. And if not, you can ignore it.
Okay, so next let's talk about the pockets and I swear we're gonna get into this bag very soon. The first pocket uh, or exterior uh, compartments or pockets, we're gonna call it. The first one is this, what used to be called um, a magazine pocket, although these days there are scant few paper magazines out there uh, and I see you know very even fewer people actually carrying them. Uh, it's just a single broad flat pocket that runs the whole width of the back of the bag. There's no independent dimension. It just relies on, you know, like a little bit of stretch here. This is obviously well suited for your, you know, flat objects, flat, uh, thin objects like magazines or, um, you know, newspapers, if you're still carrying those. Now, I know some of you are expecting me to say that this is a great place to store your business papers, man. But because it doesn't actually like Velcro or sew up, there's no closure at the top. It's literally a magazine drop-in pocket. I would not put my business papers man in here uh, unless you know you don't care about your business. What I found in practice, I used this pocket for um, was for like if I get a brochure. Well, sorry, I haven't. Uh, I did not use it for this, but I can imagine it for this usage, which is like if you're carrying this in a more professional or work kind of situation, you go to uh, expo or conference or whatever, or somebody gives you a bunch of like brochures you're never gonna look at or you know, meeting notes you're never gonna care about. Just throw them in here. I guess those are technically business papers, but like they're not like the real business papers. So you just throw that stuff in there and then you throw it out at the hotel or whatever when they're not looking. Or what I did use it for is like incidental pieces of paper I got along with. So for example, when I check out of a, of a hotel, they'll give you the printed itinerary or uh, invoice or whatever. You just, I just drop it inside of here. Like I don't really care if I lose that, at least for, for personal travel. Um, but you know, I also don't want to be like unzipping the bag, stick it inside of there, whatever. You know, so it's just easy to drop it in there. Receipts or, you know, sometimes even like a wrapper from like, you know, food or whatever. You might get too long, just throw it in there. Um, so that's usually what I found this uh, back pocket most useful for here. Now, the next pocket I think we should talk about um, is, are these side water bottle pockets. There's one on each side um, and they are constructed of a kind of like, it's the same X-Pack material as the rest of the body runs, you, know, you can see, almost all the way to the top, maybe 80, 90% of the way to the top. It's just folded over, let's see if I can show you the, the best way to show you here. Uh, if you're looking from the top of the bag, you can see it's just kind of folded over into a pleat like this. There's no gusseting or pleating at the bottom. There are no drainage holes or stretch mesh here. It's just a single X-Pack flat folded over with one gusset on the side and then it's held in place by this elasticated or held close by this elast piece of elastic here. When you're using like X-Pack or some fabric that doesn't have that stretch and you're not using mesh, like a pleated over solution with a single elastication here, again, like you see in a lot of airbags, is a nice way of keeping it out of the way, looking clean, but still allowing it to expand uh, when you need to put something inside of it. So it will hold, um, you know, most of your standard water bottle pockets. This is a uh, purist, it says 18 ounce um, water bottle pocket. It's really easy, obviously, to just drop that inside of there. The elastication helps it expand outward in theory, though obviously the laws of physics being what they are, you do invariably get a little bit of like intrusion into the main compartment. This is gonna be highly dependent on how packed out your main compartment is, how big your water bottle is, particularly in diameter, and then like just sort of like the firmness or not firmness of the contents inside of this bag here. Now. Uh, it will hold larger ones. You can see it will push out. You can push it out some more. So if you had a slightly larger one, it should fit. Like a one liter Nalgene might be stretching the bounds of what I think is really realistic here. But something like a 500 milliliter, like standard water bottle you might get at the airport convenience store or whatever, is going to fit in here really well. It barely comes out above the surface. Speaking of which, because there is no gusseting or elastication or pleating at the bottom, only here on the side, what this means is that when you stuff in the water bottle pocket, you can see invariably, you're not able to use like this bottom, this bottom portion of the bag doesn't expand out. So you're effectively limited to how deep inside of the bag you can push it in. And the water, the pocket, and the wider the water bottle, the less you're gonna be able to push it down all the way to the bottom. Now, 
This is particularly an issue for like taller water, not an issue, but this is something to look out for with taller water bottles or something like maybe an umbrella or something like that, where it pushes out, you know, so high above the pocket line that you have very little surface here to retain it. And the X-Pack is smooth, right? There's no like rubber layer, or elastication layer like you will find in some other kinds of water bottle pockets or, you know, any kind of rubber, you know, stopping here. So things that are very tall and, you know, top heavy or whatever can fall out of this uh, pocket. But I think for most normal water bottle, like usage, that's not going to be an issue. It's just, you know, in, in those particular cases. Uh, also, because there is no um, holes or drainage holes or anything at the bottom, this is a good place to put something that you might want to access very readily, but wouldn't be the end of the world if it, you know, gets lost. The primary example or of the example of that that I found is I would put like my USB battery charger in here with like a cable, you know, like a charging cable. You stick this under the seat in front of you. So let's um so let's pretend this is the seat in front of me. This is me sitting here. I stick like my USB charger in here with the cable, snake that up up into the tray table up here, and then you can charge your phone. Uh, you know, put on a little magnetic tripod or whatever, charge your phone while it's charging here, and the cable just snakes down in this pocket when I'm done getting off the plane, just throw everything inside of here, except for my phone, keep that in hand. And like, it, it's usually retained pretty well because of this elastication, and because the pocket's pretty deep, and there's no holes at the bottom. So that's kind of a nice uh, usage that I found other than water bottles. And since there's one on either side, you can have a water bottle on one and uh, have like a granola bar or your battery charger or whatever in the other. So next, let's talk about the front flap pockets. On the front of this duffel are two identical pockets. Um, they are clearly dominating the front of the design, and they are themselves, in turn, dominated by these broad leather um, flaps here, and these large, chonky fidlock buckles on the front. Um, the pockets themselves, and let's deal with this now, have some amount of, uh, it's a very slight amount of, you can see right here, independent dimensioning. So a little bit here, but they have no stretch or anything like that. There's no adornment and it's obviously x it doesn't itself stretch. There's no mesh. And you can see that they kind of solve the common problem of like having gaps on there by just having like really broad um, top flaps that cover, you know, go far beyond the width of the pocket itself uh, here. The inside of the pockets are very, let me, here. Inside of the pocket themselves have contrast stitching, but nothing else inside of there. And they're fairly deep. They go all the way to the bottom of the bag here. Um, now, while the idea of a small, easily accessible first order pocketing that is relatively secure is a good one in practice, in reality, or in theory, in practice, I found that the design and the utility of these pockets were somewhat disappointing, um, kind of ruined by, I think, some odd proportions, material choices, and the too tight execution. So, Three main things that I wanna say about this. First of all, there's nothing wrong with a flap covering for a pocket like this, but um, I think they were trying to give a nod to their more traditional um, wax canvas or whatever materials with these leather flaps. And it just, it felt to me a little bit like an odd choice. The the, the leather is kind of heavy, which is, I mean, it's, it's within reason, I mean, obviously, but it's just heavy and it contrasted oddly, and I'll talk about this in a second with the, lightness and the flexibility of the X-Pack here. But much more annoyingly is sort of like the second order implication of this material choice and the delta between the flexibility uh, of the leather and the X-Pack and the pocket construction here, right? So when you, they chose to use this really chonky Fidlock buckle that like you can see here, that is, it's quite large it's, and it's very thin. Thick. It's not the fidlock buckle that I think they should have used for this. And what happens is this leather is comparatively stiff. This X-Pack pocket is comparatively not stiff. And the fidlock buckle, as is their wont, only opens when slid to a particular side, in this case sideways. It will, it's really easy to close. You can just go like this and the magnets drop it in like this, but it will not open outward or upward. It has to go, you have to slide it like this. Now, you can do it with one hand, but you can, oh, let's see if you can see here. Like, it's hard to do it like this, slide it open with one hand because the pocket, the webbing has very, there's very little play on the webbing. There's very little webbing, which is nice to be fair. Like it, it, um, 
<laughs> Sorry, hold on. Um, that means it doesn't like slam on the ground when it's open. And again, it's really easy to close. But because there's very little webbing, and because the leather is stiff and so broad, and this and is much stiffer also than the relative flexibility of the X pack, and the pocket has very little dimension and no play because of X, you know, um, the material. Like it's actually kind of hard to get the necessary torque uh, to open the Fidlock buckle. Now, obviously. Um, I've been a human for more than a few seconds and had opposable thumbs the whole time. So like, it's not impossible to do when the bag is, you know, facing you or not even facing you, but like when it's kind of at eye level. But now remember the use case for this bag, personal item tucked in, in the seat, in front of you, in the footwell. Now imagine you're sitting, I'm sitting on the seat here. This is tucked in under in the seat in front of me. I reach down, snake down in the dark. I'm coming in from this angle, kind of bent over in the tiny little cramped seats. And you're trying to like torque it out like this. This is annoying. It's frictionful. It really is. It was a pain in the butt. And then um, if you put something inside of it, like this is, a, it, it is hard. It's in the dark, you can't see it. You're bent over in an awkward, tiny cramped space, blah, blah, blah. It was annoying. On top of that, the pockets themselves don't have that much um, space in there. So even though in theory, like you can pack a lot of stuff in there, like if you were to put, like I just have like a phone, this is an Xperia something or other, iPro or whatever, and then these are some Master and Dynamic MW08s, I think. When you put them in, just these two things here, which is what they suggest on the product page as well, like already you can see it's actually exceeded the built-in independent depth of the dimensioning or built in or the depth dimension of the independent dimension that's built in so that means you kind of get like this bulge here in the pocket you know you can't accommodate it but then that makes it even harder to get that takes up some of the play that you would need to torque open this buckle maybe the third thing then in this place here is like because it is like that once you fight it open and you kind of reach in here it's kind of it's a little bit tighter than i would have preferred um, again, especially when you're kind of bent in under the seat in front of you when it's, you know, down there. Uh, I just kind of thought that this was overall, um, a little bit disappointing in terms of the actual execution. And I think it would have been solved, could have been solved with like giving a little bit more play in the materials or using like a, a, a different type of fidlock buckle would have been awesome. I think it's just these, these chonky ones with the, the just construction overall makes it a little bit hard. So next, let's talk about the compartments bag. We're finally gonna get into this bag, ladies and gentlemen. The bag has two major compartments. This is the main compartment, and this is what they call the work compartment. This is, I suppose, nominally the back of the bag. I mean, it's the back of the bag. It'd be weird if you carried it the other way. Um, I sh it opens with these two-way, very smooth coated YKK zips with the custom uh, metal hardware on there for the zipper pulls, and it opens beautifully like this. Look at that. Ta -da! That's great. Spoiler alert, the front also does that and it's also part of the reason why I love this bag. Now, I really like the separation of like a work, what they call work compartment or tech compartment and a main compartment. And I really like how wide and easily it opens. Um, the opening of the flexibility and also the smoothness overall of the zippers, even though they're coated, like you can definitely one hand this thing even around the corners very smooth, um, provides you a lot of flexibility. And I think it's gonna be a theme that you're gonna notice, you know, both you may have noticed and you will continue to notice in this bag, which is like very simple ideas, nothing revolutionary, but like well done and that provides you a bunch of flexibility in how you use it. So you can obviously leave this open a little bit at the top like this, just reach in, grab your laptop, grab your, oh, what is this? This is papers, man. Um, stuff from inside of here, zip it back up. This is like if you're, you know, Got it in front of the seat in front of you. you. Want to get something out of there. You got it next to you at the check-in gate or sitting next to you at the lounge or whatever. Great place to get in and out of. But you can also, you know, do the whole like, okay, now we're going to do some work or now we're going to load this up kind of thing. Flop it all the way open. I previously showed you the uh, air suspension or the Supreme suspension strap. So I, I find that this is a really nice place to kind of drop it in here. And that's because this compartment has um, some, you can kind of see, has about four centimeters of depth of like independent dimension, four, four and a half, depending, you know, on how you kind of load it up. That means the main compartment itself could be used to drop stuff in, plus all the built-in organization. Great. So 
Looking inside of here, on the back, this is maybe the back of the bag, you've got a padded and sort of fleece lined, I mean, not sort of fleece lined, um, laptop book compartment. Uh, it's got a bit of a false bottom uh, and, and um, you know, protects the laptop in there. It'll hold something, this is a 16 inch MacBook Pro. I think I mentioned this earlier. Um, I would normally carry a slightly lighter laptop for something that's hand carried, so like a 16 inch MacBook or 15 inch, whatever it is, MacBook Air, or even like a 13 inch or something like that. Um, but I just wanted to show that this will fit in here. Um, if you've got a much thicker laptop, it may not be able to, like one of those uh, Razer 8 Blade 18 gaming laptops or whatever. Uh, sorry, if it's 18 inches, it's not gonna fit in here in the depth dimension. 16, I think is what's really realistic in here. And then if it's really thick, uh, it might not fit in here depth wise that so you might be able to get it inside of here. If it's thick but smaller, so like a chonky like 15 or four, maybe 14 inch gaming laptop or something, it might be able to fit inside of there. Um, I think I mentioned already, but just in case the contrast um, lining makes it really easy to find everything inside of here. Not that it's that big of a compartment, but that's true, especially when you've got it kind of just zipped up um, halfway and you're kind of looking in, looking in from the top. It's really easy to kind of see, you know, the contrast lining there. Uh, on this side here, we have a broad flat pocket. Uh, here is where I would recommend you carry your, say it with me, business papers man. This uh, folder with a single piece of white paper standing in for all the top secret business documents I usually carry. Um, you can also store a la uh, another laptop in here. Actually, you definitely can. I've carried two laptops in here before. It wasn't fun, but you can do it. Um, or more uh, commonly, I would say like a tablet, even with a type cover or whatever attached, there's a, enough flex on here, even though there's no padding, no fleece lining or whatever, that you can carry it in there. This is also gonna be kept relatively off the bottom by the design, though it's not necessarily a false bottom per se. There's also these two broad flat with no dimension pockets, but they have you know enough play in this material. This is a softer material. I don't know what it is, some sort of uh, nylon, coated nylon or something. So this has give, unlike the X-Pack, which doesn't have give. So that lets you kind of, you know, like put stuff inside of here. You can put what I like to call moderately chunky things in here. So I've got here like the big 120 watt Apple power brick and then the MagSafe charger. Again, I would normally not carry this. Normally I just rock a single electronics kit that I have. And here I'll show you everything charges by USB-C. Um, one of those small anchor ones, um, gallium nitride ones, but just to show you that you can do this. And then inside of here, I have a uh, magic mouse, but you can obviously put other stuff in here. Moderately chonky things work well in here. There's no stretch mesh or, you know, elastication or whatever. It just kind of relies on some really simple, broad, flat pockets that leverages the natural give of this material coupled with the patterning and just sort of the broadness that gives you, you know, like a lot of utility without overwhelming you with this overly specialized organization like pen pockets and business card pockets or whatever. Here. And as I mentioned, also you can put stuff in the main compartment of the work compartment. So next let's get into the last and final compartment of this bag here, which is the main compartment. Same YKK number eight racket coil coated zippers here with the custom hardware. Um, for this one, you're gonna wanna flip it over like this is how I find naturally is the better way of accessing this main compartment. So like you get to your destination, you put this on the hotel bed or whatever. And I'm gonna be really careful here because of a flaw I'm gonna talk about in a second here. Actually, let's talk about the flaw first and then we'll talk about the main compartment. All right, so look, I, I'm gonna show it to you. And then you're gonna see. This is very natural. You get to the destination, unzip the bag, flip your stuff over. Oh no! All the contents of these front inner zip pockets just goes, or front pockets, and they're not zipped, that would solve the problem, but they're not zipped. Uh, just go spilling out all, all over your bed, or if you're unlucky, all over the roller luggage, roller conveyor belt at airline security, airport security. Ask me how I know that. So, and it's not like it was me who opened it. It was uh, the air airline people or security people and just stuff all across. Behold, uh, airport, the contents of my bag. Uh, let's start with the contents of the bag since they're already spilled out everywhere. Then we'll talk about these pockets. All right. Uh, these are, well, I do it simultaneously. So these are the uh, front inner zip pockets of the bag here. Uh, I've chosen an overly tight camera angle, so we're gonna have to 
to do this a little bit oddly. Here's the front of the bag. The bag's sitting on its back. I'm flipping it open towards you, so I'd be looking down at the top here of this main compartment. But I've flipped it over. Uh, there's these two inner front, or these two pockets uh, on the inside front flap. They are, it's the same contrast line material, that nylon or whatever it is, a, I don't know, coated material that has a little bit of give naturally, as we saw in the work compartment. Uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, made of San Francisco SFBags.com branding here. These have a little bit of very slight amount of like dimension built into them, unlike the ones in the backs that lets them in practice hold even more moderately chunky stuff than the work compartment pockets. And other than that, they're very simple and unadorned, just two drop-in pockets. This one has a key leash on this side, which I thought was a bit of an odd choice. I would have thought they would have been better placed inside of the front uh, you know, pocket here, uh, but whatever. Um, you will want to be careful, obviously, if you put your keys in here, like what else do you put in here? I actually would prefer to keep, or I'm sorry, I preferred to, ke to keep um, my phone and my wallet and earbuds inside of here, just because I found A, these are extremely finicky, B, I don't like having that kind of important stuff on an external pocket, at least if it's not close to my back, and then C, like I just... <laughs> okay, um, but obviously if you put your keys in here, you wanna be careful you don't put your cell phone or whatever, you get scratched in there, because there's no like additional organization here, so everything just falls into a kind of jumble at the bottom. Uh, I happen to have like some headache medicine because I had a headache recently in the last trip. Uh, just an extra little like you know on the go you know toothbrush so I could brush my teeth in the um, airport bathroom whatever between there. I mentioned earlier like normally this is my entire tech kit. Normally it's like an Anchor 65 watt uh, GAN uh, charger and then a couple of USB C cables and a couple little adapters and an odd case I need like a lightning, USB-C to lightning or micro USB adapter. And that's it, this charges everything. So normally I'm not carrying like a big adapter or thing. This is what my tech kit has come down to, a little X-Pack pouch, uh, an anchor, you know, USB battery for, you know, charging my phone in an emergency, uh, 20 watt uh, charger with a two meter USB-C cable. I usually plug this into the bed stand next to me at the hotel or whatever, and that gives me enough length to like, you know, be on my phone doing phone things or YouTubing more than often than not watching cat videos on YouTube. Uh, you know, and then a little bit of hand cream because, uh, you know, it's rough out there sometimes on these delicate uh, mountain hands. So, you know, I showed you the problem, uh, which is you drop all the stuff inside of here. And uh, as soon as you, you know, it's great when the bag is, let me zip it up a little bit here. It's, a bit, it's great when the bag is standing upright, as is off its want, um, and it's designed to do, and you're just kind of looking at it in from the top, like, great, you can do these big, wide, dump pockets, easy to get stuff in and out of. That's why I said, like, I like having my wallet and my phone in here. It's just one big zip to get in, and then... But when you get to the destination, you set this thing down, you go to unpack it, or whatever, because it's, it attaches up here, the fulcrum, the pivot points here, everything just goes flying out. Happens every time. This is annoying. They should have caught this. At this price point, they should have caught this. In testing, I'm hopeful that in a second revision, like the Hello of Velcro or a snap top or something like that, or even magnets, if you don't know how they work, I will explain how they work. Uh, anything to kind of just keep the contents from sliding out here. Last thing I'll mention is because these pockets, uh, I, I've talked about moderately chonky a few times here. Um, you can even fit like some folded uh, headphones, big over the ear noise canceling headphones like uh, the B&O H95Is or like those Sony, uh, I forget what they're called because Sony's names are like WXM500, blah, 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 Mark 7s, whatever they are, you know they are. Um, the folding ones, they'll fit inside of here. However, something that doesn't fold, like for example, the Apple AirPod Maxes or whatever, are not going to fit in here. Um, just something to kind of keep in mind there. Okay, so now we get to the main compartment of the bag. First thing you're going to notice, again, I'm looking at it from the top here, um, and I will turn it in a side here in a second so you can see, is like the, 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 there's no padding on these side walls except for the bottom. There's a little bit of foam here, but everything else has no padding, but it relies on the rectangular structure and the natural kind of slight rigidity of X-Pack to maintain its sort of bucket style opening and these walls, you know, um, you can see I mentioned here, the lid is basically all the way at the top, which means you have this whole uninterrupted uh, height to pack into. It's like packing in a bucket. I love this. Uh, this is a great, huge part of why I like this bag so much. Uh, inside of here, I packed something that I don't usually pack. This is a Lenovo Legion Go, side of a Waterfield Designs um, 
custom case for the Lenovo, or designed for, it's not custom, but it's still on their website, uh, leather case for the Lenovo Legion Go. They also have some for like the Steam Deck and the Asus, whatever it is. Um, kind of fits just, just right on the top here like this. Love that a lot. I also have a Keychron, I think it's the K9 Pro or whatever, in its own travel case. Um, I do love a good mechanical keyboard. Now I'm gonna kind of flip the bag up a little bit. You can kind of see what else I have in here. And you can see how like it's this nice bucket. Those slate on the top here. And then inside of here, I have a Dyneema packing cube uh, with just some clothes inside of it. Um, not some, all my clothes inside of it. I have a hair iron, because you gotta look good or else it don't matter. I've got here the Leica Deluxe uh, 8 uh, in the Leica carrying uh, case. Um, and then I have a, uh, I forget what this is called, I think it's a six by nine. This is the Waterfield design, six by nine. So just like carries like some miscellaneous stuff like a wash, wash bag and some travel soap to like wash my clothes and a few cables and blah, blah, blah. Nice and flat and uh, whatever. And then I have uh, an air um, dop kit three here. Uh, this is the nylon version, a Cordura nylon version. This drops inside of here. And then you can see you just got this nice big open uh, compartment, like I mentioned, for bucket style loading. It's super easy to load this thing. Um, I mean, just watch, right? I'm gonna do this in real time and just how nicely everything fits inside of here. There's actually a word in Japanese. Um, I, I really delight in finding when other cultures or languages have words for things that I think we should have in English. There's a word in Japanese called kami fit, when like everything fits just exactly right. And like, there's no greater joy I feel, or I'm sure there's a few greater joys, but like very few greater joys in this world than like when you get like the perfect, like just the right tool for the right job. And just look at how nice this all is, how nicely it all fits in there, and how quick and easy it was to pack that up. I just really, just great stuff. So. With that having been said, if you're in the market for a bag like this, what are some other bags you might want to consider? First and foremost, the Mission Workshop Transit Duffel 27 liter. I actually really like this bag. It's the same, it's exactly the same um, problem space and very similar approaches, water bottle pockets, kind of square rectangular bag. Uh, you know, you got your carry handles. There's also a built-in um, kind of hideaway shoulder strap inside of here. Um, this one does have, um, it, it works well as a personal item, two bag travel, all this stuff. This one opens from the top as opposed to the whole flip out from the side thing. And the laptop compartment, which also holds a 16 liter, is built into the side here. Overall, I think a more rectangular, sharply rectangular bag than the X Air, as I mentioned. There's a lot of pocketing in here, like one, two, three, four big dump pockets, two water bottle pockets on the side, a weird little, uh, pocket that's very low profile it zips open here um, which is essentially I think for like bag tools uh, or something like that uh, front magazine drop-in pocket here uh, and then a big laptop compartment here uh, with some amount of padding um, not an explicit work compartment per se um, but still very similar uh, this one has an added feature that, uh, which is that it can like actually that's these buckles are like attach it to the front of a bicycle like the handlebars go through here and I think like you have a rack or something at the bottom you can like attach it front. I've never done that but if you wanted to do that you can do that. There's separately a backpack strap conversion kit that like attaches here and then somehow to here but like it's the weirdest single implementation of a optional duffel style backpack I've ever seen because like this is the side that goes on your back not this side this side. So you, if this is your back, you're like, oh, like it sticks out like this. It's very bizarre. I wouldn't let that be the reason why you go with this bag here. Anyway, I think this is plays in a very similar space to the X Air Duffel. So it's definitely worth checking out. Um, just a little different take on the same kind of uh, genre. Yet another bag to consider is the Evergoods TD35 or Transit Duffel 35. Uh, this one from the stalwarts over at Evergoods is a very Evergoodsy. Uh, approach to the travel duffel space. It's available in a variety of colors and material ways versus the Xair. It's a little bit larger. Uh, this is 35 liters versus 27 in the Xair, but it feels even larger in practice. It's just a much broader and wider and taller bag. In practice, you'll be able to see like this is just significantly taller and wider um, than the, uh, there we go, than the um, Xair here. 
It is slightly heavier by about 200 grams and it's significantly cheaper, like 250 US dollars versus 459 or whatever for the X-Air. It has a very Evergoodsy approach to organization, which means like you've got a couple of drop-in pockets and your key leash and this front organizer and then like a big broad thing here and then whatever. It's very Evergoodsy. If you're a fan of Evergoods, this will feel right at home. Um, all in all, I would rate the organization bill. Numerically, the number of pockets is different. I would rate the organization in practice about equivalent between the two bags here. Has similar strengths to the x in terms of efficiency of the shape and high capacity to size ratio, blah, blah, blah. This one is poorer, I would say, slightly in the capacity to size ratio or weight ratio. It's a little bit heavier. But in my opinion, it probably suffers most from its larger size because like, this is fairly cumbersome to carry, like fully packed out. And I mean, maybe the six foot plus swole gym homies might have an easier time. But for me, like this is very uncomfortable. It's one of the reasons I haven't like fully reviewed this bag is I just don't like carrying it that much under load. It does also come with like <clears throat> shoulder straps, which are weird because like you got these really hard to operate low profile. You like unbuckle the zipper track wings and then they go up like this and then they got this strap that clips in there. And then you got like this weird thing where it's like, it go. It looks like you're supposed to wear. I can't believe this is the design they came up with. It's terrible. I don't. I don't like this at all. I like this like three percent and ninety seven percent dislike. So usually this is relegated to like throwing in the back of the truck or like in the back of a car or something like that. And when you have to carry a bunch of stuff, it is maybe better. I think nominally it's just like opening up wide and just chucking a bunch of stuff in there. Uh, but uh, definitely something to look at if you're a fan of Evergoods and you look for something similar in this space. Bellroy Light Duffel 30 liter. I've done a full review of this on my site, on my uh, channel before. So I will uh, you know, drop a link in there. Basically, I think this is another very interesting approach to this problem space that has notably less organization. There's only a few little kind of sewn in pockets or whatever, uh, no exterior water bottle or whatnot. Um, but it has an even higher capacity to size ratio. It's a very lightweight bag. Uh, it also has a distinction of being nearly 300 to $350 cheaper. Um, than the X-Air, again, this is a mass produced in Asia bag as opposed to the X-Air, which is handmade or I don't know, handmade, but at least like made in the USA. Um, but you know, it's also 500 grams lighter. Uh, so $350 cheaper, 500 grams lighter, even higher capacity to size ratio. Maybe its biggest weaknesses are it doesn't have a dedicated laptop compartment here, has significantly reduced uh, um, organizational set. There's no structure or protection in the design here. It's a pretty floppy bag. Uh, but, you know, um, so if you're looking to carry a lot of tech gear or whatever, this isn't the right choice. But if you're looking for something casual and affordable uh, and you're maybe like a personal travel, you just want like, this is a good, good, good option in the same problem space. Finally, uh, there's the GORUCK kit bag. This is a 32 liter. This is a um, special edition collab version. I forgot which one. This is the, uh, the Kaizen 3 or whatever. And there's a whole series of these in you know normal fabrics or whatnot. Uh, I'm gonna do a review of this bag at some point in the future so I won't spend too much time talking about it. It's definitely, um, I think, a bag that is oriented more, at, well, it's a, it's a kit bag. So just dumping a bunch of stuff. If you're looking for a good outdoor kind of bag to carry gear and stuff, uh, you know, helmets and boots and I don't know, whatever other, you know, outdoorsy, rugged thing your particular pursuit might bring you. Like this is a good bag for it. It also has a separate shoe compartment at the bottom here. Um, fairly shallow one, but uh, has a separate shoe compartment at the bottom. That was a weird angle for it. So you can throw your dirty stuff inside of there. Um, and it's also available in a variety of sizes. There's like a 50 something liter, 57 liter. And I think some, they used to make at least like an 80 something liter as well. A little bit of organization, some mesh pocket on the side here, if you can see, uh, and a zippered internal hanging pocket. There's also a shoulder strap. There's also, uh, you know, the carry handles and whatnot. Um, but anyway, if you're looking for something to carry gear, in the same kind of style uh, this might be something to check out. And so really, that is it. If you're interested and have any questions about this bag, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. If I can, I'll answer them. And if you have any bags or other things you'd like me to review, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. And if I can, I will review those. Thank you very much.